Daniela Camboni and welcome back to the Daniela Camboni show here at ITM Trading on the road in Toronto, Canada. We're at the incredible Ripley's Aquarium surrounded by incredible fish and investors focused on gold and silver. And joining me now is Ted Butler. He is with the Morgan Report. I'm sure you know that name because David Morgan is a great friend of our show. Right. And uh, you're the, you just kind of joined forces with David. Yeah. Like a new face to the industry. I am, but I'm, I don't want to confuse myself with the Ted Butler from uh, Miami. It's a different Ted so, Butler. Anyone who's in the precious metals industry knows of that Ted Of Butler. course. You're of the course. new Jet. I am. I am. The British one. No, and no relation to that Ted. No Butler. relation, no. Um, Although I do admire his work. Yeah. To an extent. So obviously I was attracted to your biography and I want right. to talk about this because besides the fact that you work with the great David Morgan, it said you left your financial education. Right. And I want to talk about that because obviously my audience and myself were interested in kind of the rebels against right. the financial system, right. finding solutions against the traditional financial system. So first and foremost, tell me a little bit about your background of how you were going that traditional course right. and then said, you know what, forget it. Yeah, so I studied at the University of Liverpool. I did my international business degree. I graduated, and that was in September 2022. And then I did, went on to do my master's in finance and investment management. I did that for three months. And suddenly, I started educating myself about gold and silver. The red pill moment for me was Mike Maloney's Secrets of Money series. <laughs> uh, nice. I watched the Four Horsemen documentary with David Morgan. And then I started reaching out to these guys on LinkedIn. And David was first to, kind enough to reply to me. I got on a call with David around this time last year, and I asked if I could start writing, writing for him, gold and silver related uh, articles. And he said, yes, and we've, we've, we've not turned back since. Okay, yeah. so, wow, I have so many questions. So first and foremost, uh, a lot of people will say, well, the younger generation is not interested in gold. Oh yeah, they all care about crypto, right? right. So what drew you to gold and silver? Well, for me, it's the historical president. I've had a many conversation in Toronto with the Uber drivers and uh, 5,000 years gold and silver have been money. But we, we just think about money in terms of the last 50 years, especially my generation. My generation is very fixated on what is the now, and that's crypto. I mean, we'll come to Bitcoin shortly, but gold and silver for me is an insurance policy. It's uh, the exposure, it's, it's, it, it, it goes against the counterparty risk of the financial system. It's um, a wealth preservation tool. It's a safe haven, it's an inflation hedge, and all these things are lacking in diversified portfolios in my opinion right now. Because I originally wanted to be a financial advisor, and I decided that I was so outraged by the fact that gold and silver weren't in an investment portfolio, that I decided to make my career about gold and silver. Wow, so it's not like your family wasn't into gold nope, and silver. Nope. You just had this- This was all through my intuition. Wow, so it's sound money for you. It is indeed, yeah. And I want to make the distinction between gold, silver and Bitcoin firstly. Let's do it. So for me, Bitcoin, the characteristics were all great up until recently when the institutions started to wade in. So BlackRock with the ETFs, I think that defeats the characteristic of what Bitcoin was, which was in a means of exchange. It's now an investment. It's now a store of value. And for me, that greatly compromises what Bitcoin was supposed to be. Because what you have is there's 21 million limited supply. But now you have ETFs, which are derivatives of Bitcoin. And for me, that compromises what the supply was supposed to be, which was completely fixed. Yes, we have the halving in April. And don't get me wrong, I think Bitcoin is worth a speculation. But I would no longer put it in the same sound money camp as gold and silver because it's compromised now. Would you invest in Bitcoin? I do own Bitcoin as a speculation. I think it's still worthwhile. But for me, gold and silver has the track record. It has the backing. It has the history. It's, it's, uh, it was money for 5,000 years and multiple people in different countries decided it was money. Bitcoin's a new kid on the block, like me. So maybe I should be more <laughs> inclined <laughs> no. to it. Yeah. I mean, one of my greatest conversations with Dave and Morgan was about really diversifying outside of the traditional banking system, right? Because right? David believes that the money in the bank is not really yours, right? And you right. should be absolutely outside of the banks. I mean, what do you, what do you think of that? Well, I think, um, I mean, there's prepping, there's paranoia and there's preparation. So some people are very over the top, you know, they want to have like bunkers and they want to have, um, you know, like, I mean, the, prepping within reason, but gold and silver for me is more of an insurance policy. I'm not saying put all your money in gold and silver because that would be foolish. But what I am saying is look at what's going on with the tech stocks right now. 
Look at the bubble. Look at how overvalued they are relative to the mining companies. I mean, gold and silver mining companies are so undervalued. They're crying for capital, and they'll get it. When the, once the capital rotates out of these tech companies, it will go into gold and silver miners, and other metals, of course, as well, as we see the commodity super cycle take hold. Do you think that in order to be bullish in gold and silver, you have to believe in the demise of the U.S. dollar? Not necessarily, but the, the two are very much intertwined. I mean, we obviously have the BRICS. I mean, I recently wrote an article about China. I think the recession, well, the economic downturn has not been bypassed yet. Um, there is the argument that China will muddle through, that Xi will find a way. But I don't believe that's the case. I, 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 I see four consecutive months of deflation. I see seven months of falling food prices. I see 16 months of the PPI index falling. I see the PMI below 50 for four months in a row. And I see um, the um, Evergrande still in liquidation. That's not, I don't think that's over yet. I could be wrong, you know? And, and, and the question is really, I mean, look what's happening in commercial real estate in the United States. So the question is, what happened in China? Could that be happening? It could have a reverberating effect for sure. We could have, I, I mean, I think that the Fed will hold into a recession. I think they will cut in potentially June or September. But I think they will only cut when we actually go into a recession because to, to be quite frank, they're, they're quite foolish in that sense. They always tend to do this. Ted Butler, fascinating insights here. Uh, what are you writing on presently? I mean, this is your first PDAC, I believe, right? It is, it is. My I mean, first time in Toronto. Yeah. I was in Vegas for the Silver Symposium. Right. That was my first official conference. Right. I think that's going to be in Spokane uh, this next this time yes. around. Well, I think the sentiment is bottoming. You know, it's bottoming. Been a, bottoming, yeah. I really do believe so. It's been a long bear market. I mean, I've still got the optimism because I've come straight in here and I'm still gold and silver and I'm, I'm enthusiastic about it. But I think we have to have a turning point. And I think we're very close to it. If not, we've already hit it. I mean, gold prices are record highs, right? Today. Record, as we're speaking. Exactly. And another topic I usually you know, discuss with David Morgan is central bank digital currencies. Is that right. going to also be part of your, of your, of your coverage? I yes. Mean, is that a concern for you of in incoming capital control, central bank digital currencies? Well, central bank digital currencies yields governments far too much control. I mean, we've gone from gold to paper to digital, so potentially, uh, you know, the digital becoming a chip, I mean, whatever you believe. But I do believe that it's not good for humanity. It's, um, it allows the governments the ability to abuse their power. And history shows that if they have the ability to, they may well do it. So, Ted Butler, well, welcome to the industry. Thank you so much. Yeah, I thank you for, for joining me. I'm always interested in finding new faces. So right. thank you. Continued success. Yes. Say, give our regards to David Morgan. I will indeed. Uh, we'll see him soon, I'm sure. And please continue to stay tuned to the Daniela Camboni Show. We'll have more incredible coverage coming your way. And be sure to sign up at DanielaCamboni.com so you don't miss a beat. That's it for me. Thanks for watching.